Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Now guys, for those of you wondering, hey I don't recognise these names, that's because this is a subscriber game and it has been submitted by the Red Terran Shiver here and well they're up against Zoro, the blue Protoss in the top position which means that this is a, Z, a TVP rather and well obviously I have been pushing on my channel for everyone who watches regularly the obviously I want more of you subscribers to send in your games um, just so I can commentate them for you give you some tips and hints and those sort of things be it a bronze level game or a grandmaster game it doesn't really matter and I'm gonna try and do about one a week as long as I get them sent in because that would just be awesome so if you like the idea of this then yeah it would be cool now obviously the protest player is drunk so that is always fun but he seems to be making cognitive sentences so I question how drunk he be but anyway let's talk a little bit about PVT as a whole well obviously I think there's three main stages to this matchup the first stage is where Protoss gateway units are really really strong and that they're, they're just very cost effective they've got really good micro potential etc then of course you get more into sort of the mid game where the Terran player usually gets Marines Marauders with Stim and that is very strong in itself and suddenly gateway units just can't deal with that especially when medevacs come out it becomes exceptionally cost effective army MMM now that then follows on to the Protoss player really having to sit there and be like okay what do I do how do I combat this big ball of infantry and there's two main ways to deal with that there's either the colossus which of course has splash damage and obviously extended thermal lance gives it amazing range and then there's also high templar with storm and that is obviously a spell cost unit it's more micro intensive but the big problem with high templar on their own is that you need something to clean up after them it's a bit like getting just lots of infestors or something and just chain fungal growth thing works but it's very very difficult to pull off and you can't rush out the damage you need something to clean up with lots of low health units so really i think it's better going for a colossus first and get maybe two three out and then start the high templar production because together they're incredibly strong so what about from the turn perspective how do you combat that one Colossus you combat with Vikings and Vikings really you have to use them trying to flank the army to get some good hits off and just really see what goes on there and then of course the High Templar you combat with Goats and EMP, EMP obviously strong against Protoss anyway because it damages the shields etc. Now just seeing a little bit of shenanigans going on here and I haven't spoken too much about the openings of these two players because um, in all honesty this is a silver level, uh, silver league game and their openings aren't going to be that well refined so I'm not going to be looking at timings or anything like that and to be honest if you're below sort of gold and platinum level then I personally don't think it's worthwhile trying to worry too much about your build orders and just get a lot more of a sense of what is your overall plan in the game and try and execute that as best you can so obviously good work here with marine looking around the first point I really make here for the Terran player is they're banking an awful awful lot of minerals because they're worried now the reason they're worried is basically just due to the fact that they've not got this walled off, they've only got one barracks, and they don't know what their opponent's doing. And for the moment, obviously, there was that SCV down there, sees scouting information, sees the two zealots. Now, obviously, that's good. It's a two-gate opening, and I believe that was scouted. So, obviously, when you see the two gates, you know that there's going to be some early pressure. The way you should deal with that is really... Think about, do I need another barracks, which as you can see here, another barracks could easily be got out, there's enough money there. You can also then delay this base, so maybe just go for the two racks, delay the base, or you could look down and throwing another bunker down just to be really, really safe, because these zealots alone, they're so slow to come across the map, you're going to really, really have an easy time defending it. And there goes the second bunker now, but it's a bit late as you can see, but the zealots, they're stopping, so that's giving you some more time. These marines as well, they are getting produced once sat there, make sure you always get your rally points right, that's important. Looking at the hockeys, obviously the barracks hockey's up, that's good, two more on the way, so as a builder that's good, one racks command center followed up by two more racks, you'll then grab your two gas, that's the normal opening. Obviously the Protoss player being forced back, those zealots are not going to be able to go through those two bunkers, not even one of them, so this is still very very cost effective, the money's starting to get a bit more under control. And that's something you really want to be thinking about at all times is, is my, am I spending my money? Because obviously we all know that it's a real staple of StarCraft that what you want to be doing is making workers and making supply, often known as probes and pylons, but really it's no use getting that really good income unless you're going to spend it somehow so basically if you're noticing your money gets high just build another production facility that is a good solution to that problem so obviously at the lower levels you don't have to worry too much about is it the most cost effective route is it the most best build because you're going to make lots of little slip ups now this is great a scan 
at around kind of 6 minutes, 37 minutes. It's a good time to see what's going on. And of course, you can see there's the third gateway and there's the forge as well. That basically has let Shiver know that, hey, there's not going to be a 4 gate follow up to this. There's nothing too stressful. He also saw the gas timings. Now, gas timings are incredibly important because that basically tells you what your opponent's doing. If you see no gas, then you know it's something like a mass tier 1 push or fast expansion. If you see 2 gas, you know it's going to be teching up and you're going to really have a bit longer without any pressure onto you. If you see 1 gas, then it's probably some key tech and it could be a bit of pressure. But as you can see at the moment, Zoro just happily sitting back. Here, getting some photon cannons up at the front and this is something that a lot of lower league players feels very very feels a need to do is get things like photon cannons out they're not needed these are pretty much wasted in this situation because you've got an army these photon cannons don't serve a purpose they're just wasted minerals because you can never go and attack with them obviously if you get into really late game or you have loads of money throw them down because you've got nothing else to do with it but generally speaking static defense isn't that great unless there are situations where it is, if, if you're Zerg and you go for a, a hatch first against Terran for example, you might throw down that spine crawler just to be a bit safer against Heli and Harassment etc. But in this sort of situation you're fine, obviously Stim on its way down, the factory coming down as well. We can see obviously that that factory is most likely, or should most likely be used just to power add-ons. I think at lower league sticking to Moon's Marauders Medivacs is the best strategy for Terran against Protoss. It's just really really safe to do. As you can see Zori is getting up his robotic facility, he's getting up his third and fourth gas as well and as you can see from Shiver, getting up his third and fourth gas as well not completely mining out of this one goal <laughs> one scv only one scv in there but that's causing an awful lot of gas to come and of course this is what you don't want you don't want to be banking up too much stuff the other thing to note, oversaturation of the main. Now, this is a really, really useful trick for everyone watching, especially those in the lower leagues, that basically if you select all of the minerals, just box over them like that, see these lines? There should be two lines of workers. Anything more than that is not actually helping you mine, and you should transfer them to another base, because as you can see down here, if we take out those mules, we do only have, well, hardly any, uh, not even half saturation of this base. So if we move those four SCVs from the main down here, we'd be in a lot better shape. Meanwhile, for Zoro, well, Zoro, as you can see, oversaturated saturated loads here or was rather um, moving some back up at the main base under saturated so actually doing the right thing moving those back and that balances out the bases quite a lot is rally points one to each base that's fine as you can see an immortal coming out here the thing which you're obviously going to notice compared to a pro level game is their timings are so much more delayed now the only thing I would say is obviously from the Protoss perspective is this scouting is really really bad and that's caused by the fact that that observer has been delayed hugely. Every Protoss player watching get an observer first. Scouting information is probably the second biggest asset, second to money you have in this game because you need money to make stuff but if you don't have scouting information you don't know what to make to really combat it. Another little thing, this command center could be morphed into an orbital command preemptively. We've got a lot more barracks coming down here, we've got the starport out, we've got that factory powering add-ons which is exactly the right thing to do. The double upgrades coming out, Shiva really playing quite nicely here and again another scan going off seeing this force of units now I would actually say here that Zoe is in a very very weak position because essentially he's just got that one immortal and a lot of gateway units he's only just about to finish up his robotics bay which is absolutely essential to deal with those marine warders and medevacs of course stim is done now the one one upgrades coming in the production is doing nice good m money management but of course a lot of gas sticking up though and the, the reason you're getting a lot of gas is just because of these third and fourth gas were taken so early and you don't need them that early you're not spending that gas on much stuff the way you can really combat that is start thinking well how can I be teching is it perhaps worth me start getting out say a ghost academy or something I like the fact that there's obviously the um, starport out already you can definitely start looking getting some more starports out ready to switch into vikings once those colossus start hitting now of course the warp prism on its way out now this is a really interesting build at the moment because of course we've got the second robotic facility and of course the robo bay already finished no extended thermal launch yet so a really quite delayed strategy it looks like the third base is about to be taken that marine in a great place to see when this is going down and i mean the one thing i would say is this could have been taken an eternity earlier you are absolutely safe here for a long long time due completely to the fact that you know that your opponent was sitting back here because of the marines sitting down there so obviously that is just something to think about is really if you can expand safely do so now we're seeing here should bank up an awful lot of money and that's due to the fact that these production facilities aren't doing anything and really the way you combat that is obviously hockey tapping where you just always click basically five 
uh, is it producing stuff? So you go four. Am I producing SCVs? No. Make SCVs. Five. Am I producing Marines or whatever? Yes. Produce. St then start producing them more or whatever. We've got of course these starports coming down. I don't know if that was triggered by seeing yeah, anything, yeah, but right. for the moment we've got a good drop coming down here, and this is good utilization of the map that you can get this in. Obviously, this double immortal drop is going to be very very annoying, but it should get scouted. And this is just a case of keeping an eye on what's going on. The war prism still going to come over though. No defense down here. This is the big problem. Is if you're going to take another base, you need to be able to defend it. So definitely think, where can I put units? This little drop is getting picked up. Don't overcommit to anything. That is the one massive thing that you should be thinking about. Again, it could just be a case of too much micro, but these sort of units, if they were sitting further down here, they'd be able to defend the natural and the third base, because this is just too much losses at the moment, and this is where multitasking becomes a really, really big issue. Lifting up the base, again, I'd say that's a slight overreaction. You've got some Vikings out on the field. I am sure I saw some in production. So again, those Vikings... And then you just go and start picking up those war prisms. You don't need to bring this base all the way back here and land it again. That's, of course, all just delaying more time, which is not something that you want to be doing. As you can see, the third base of the Protoss isn't really doing much at the moment. His production's not great. He's banking up an awful lot of minerals and also a relatively large amount of gas for Protoss. And really, you're in a great spot as the Terran player here. You've got your 2-2 upgrades coming down. Upgrade-wise for the Protoss, 1-1's one, done, but 2-2 two, two isn't even started. The Colossus numbers are getting higher, and this is where you really want to be sort of thinking about, okay, where do my scans go off? Do I need to scan down this base? As you can see, this base is now up. You know it's there, you know it's up and running. Can you start being aggressive towards it? The Viking numbers are getting very, very good, and the only thing I would say is that the Hockeys are being on separate things absolutely perfect. So many lower league players, hockey or Vikings separately, because then you can flank in. Now, I'd say, yet again, Zoro is doing the same thing as Shiva was earlier. Splitting these units up, but not really keeping the force together. That leaves these Colossus very, very vulnerable. The drop, maybe, rather than going into a third, would perhaps be a lot better coming up into the main base. Because look at how far away those units are from the main base. And that's what you want to try and achieve with dropping. The purpose behind doing a drop isn't necessarily to do loads of damage. It's to try and make your opponent feel like they need to defend everywhere at once, which can cause them to split their army wide. Because all while this Protoss Death Bolt is in on itself here, and all together it can be very very hard to engage directly. But if you were to send just one medevac's worth of units here, the Protoss then has to decide, well, am I going to pull back to try and defend this, or do I try and defend the front? That can add to a lot of problems, because even if the main force stays here, you can deal, you can pick off the robotics bay, the production facilities, etc. very, very effectively. Now, obviously, the proxy pylon coming down, that's good. It's just really keeping an eye on things. Money getting really, really high. The double command center being built, that's the right thing to do. If you see your minerals getting stupidly high, just build bases. You can't really go wrong with building too many bases. Work account-wise, obviously, haven't touched on this yet, but behind in the workers, but not by a huge amount. You're both on three bases. It's quite clear that it's undersaturated here, but if those workers hadn't been killed, it would have been a little bit closer. Obviously, always be building workers. The Viking numbers are getting stupidly high now. Um, obviously, you've got to start thinking, is this still a worthwhile investment? And that's where you've got to be thinking about these units. And the only way you can really combat this big push coming along is just getting more placement of units around here. Just basically keeping an eye out. Obviously keep an eye out for the ripple for that observer because this is how the process knows it's all fine to go and attack. Now the good thing here is you want to bring your Vikings up over this ground, this dead ground over here to pick up the Colossus. It's good voting. Now once all these force fields go down, don't be afraid to pull back. This is the number one mistake in this game is that you have just, um, the ship has just carried on engaging and this really lost an awful lot of units because the process was able to engage very very cost effectively whereas if you just pull back and let those force fields time out then you're going to be in a much better spot all the colossus are getting picked off here this is an absolutely great engagement now obviously the vikings landing that's good but because of that first engagement because of when all those force fields were down the continual attack just allowed the colossus to really do way too much damage now obviously the most important thing in this situation is resupplying and making sure that all of your bases and stuff are producing and as you can see all the rats are producing something that's exactly right and again don't overcommit. This is going to end badly for you because the reinforcements of the protests are coming in here and you are just going to lose all of this force. What you should have done is instead, as soon as the retreat was coming, pull back and wait for your own reinforcements. That is probably the next biggest thing I'd say is don't be afraid to retreat. If, you, if you've got a little win, pull back, make sure you've got enough units to really do the good damage. And I'm always going to predict that this is going to go the same way again, that another push forward. Or actually, no, Shiva doing the right thing, pulling back, waiting. 
get more supply in, get more units on the field ready to deal with this. Obviously, these two command centers morphing into orbital commands. Looking around, all the hoc all the rally points really, really good. Rallying forward, that's precisely the right thing to do. The Protoss is in an incredibly weak spot right here because there's no Colossi on the field. And well, they are they are two back in the main base, but they're not in this main action area. So what you want to be looking at doing is, can I utilize this to my advantage? And the answer is yes. Marines, Marauders, with Stim, with Medivac support, wreck gateway units. All you really got to worry about is that Immortal Beauty can focus that down incredibly quickly. But because you're not poking forward and just to take a look, you're really just sitting back and getting yourself in a bad position. The other important thing to note is never just ball up your units if you're being defensive like this. Split them out preemptively, spread your units into a good attack arc. That way when the Protoss pushes forward, your units are already spread out like this and they'll have more units engaging theirs. Always think about getting that better concave angle against your opponent. That is a prime thing to do. The other good position I might think about putting these Vikings is rather than behind all of your army, utilize things like dead space to your advantage. Advantage. Put some Vikings over here. Then, when the Protoss army moves through, one, the Stalkers can't get underneath them, but they'll still be able to pick off those Colossus. They also give you scouting information, because I think one of the biggest things we'll see here is that there is probably a lack of scouting information. Obviously, there's Watchtower Hell, so you know that's coming down, but from the Protoss player, the Protoss player is just expanding everywhere, and quite a lot of these positions are known. You don't know that there's a force there, you don't know that there's a base over there. So always be thinking where we're going. But here we go, another big engagement. Now the big problem here is the Vikings are nowhere to be seen. The army is completely split in half. You've basically just done the job of force fields for the Protoss there. Always be thinking about good engagements. Now this is very likely to end incredibly badly for the terror play here just because of the positioning. Now the Vikings did manage to get a Colossus kill off there, saving some time, but if we look at the loss tab, while they are, while the Protoss is actually behind, that was a very cost effective engagement because the whole army didn't engage together. Behind all of this, I'd be thinking, could I get a drop off? A drop to this third base would be huge, but now this is going to be a really, really tough push to beat because obviously the Vikings out of position. So while they are one shot in this Glossa, they are out of position, they're late to the party, and as a result, most of the infantry is picked off. And that means that this gateway force, if it was all engaging, would be able to clean this up pretty comfortably. But because, again, the Protoss player split his units apart, this isn't going in his favour, but he does have three Immortals there now, so it's getting slightly stronger, he's getting another wave of Warpins, but this is a good time to push forward, you know you've got good units, but as soon as you see this kind of not going in your favour, don't be afraid to run away again. And it's always better, in my opinion, to pull back, after doing some damage and trying to push forward and win straight away. But again, in this situation it worked out well, but was it as cost effective as it could have been if you just pulled back to be a little bit more defensive, wait for it, make sure that your force is absolutely dominating because the important thing that's missing from the Protoss army here is the Colossi. There's also no High Templar on the field, which is something that should have been transitioned to in a long time ago. You could also say that the Terran hasn't really adapted to that by getting a Ghost Academy. That would have been a good thing to do. Lots of barracks out though. Okay, just too much gas and if you're, if you're banking that much gas, why get more gas? Why aren't you expanding out to other places? Just expand everywhere. This is good play at the moment though, and I'd, I'd definitely say the Terran is hugely ahead at the moment, um, just purely because of the amount of army on the field. You can see that really the Terran winning by a mile. The problem is not enough mineral, not enough income really, or spending of that income, because as you can see, 2,000 mineral is banked up. Also, very, very passive play. Don't be afraid to be aggressive. Poke and prod around. Go and try and pick off this base. And the reason you can be aggressive like that is that if the worst comes to the worst just pull back and run away because you're not going to lose too much if you know you've just had a good engagement you want to really go and counter attack and deal some good damage so the scan going off was a good move don't be afraid to scan more obviously you've got a lot of orbital commands down so be, be really scan heavy to be honest scan all over the place know what your opponent's doing where their army is this base almost certainly going to go down it's not going to be able to get defended again it could just be it could have been down about two minutes ago and that's something that you always want to think about is when can i take this base down when can i do the damage meanwhile a drop could also be going off in the main base so again just think about how can i split up the enemy's army how can i make my army the most cost effective as possible and of course this base hidden down here isn't going to get picked up unfortunately but Again, that would be a nice little place to pick off. This Protoss army could just get crushed. If this force just went straight in, it would completely die. Um, especially if the engagement angle was right, the Vikings engaged well. The Viking count getting a bit lower. 
that's the only thing I would notice, and only two more in production. Make sure you keep those Viking numbers high, ready to deal with the Colossus, but not too high. You don't want to get loads on the field, but again, this Protoss force could very, very easily get picked off, especially now it's positioning itself badly. You can see in the Watchtower, half your units come this way, half your units come this way. You sandwich in between, and that will really stop everything, and you'll get maximum surface area to attack now. I just can't believe how unlucky you're not spotting that base is, but obviously for the moment, I'd say... Terran ahead. Terran in a good position in terms of upgrades. 3-2 done compared to 3-3. Three, three. So you've got an upgrade advantage there. Obviously, you're mining out down in your natural, so don't be afraid to start moving those SCVs to other bases. Don't be afraid to start taking other bases as well, just like you're doing there. The real, real issue I'm seeing throughout the game at the moment is, of course, that this force is just not attacking you. There was a lead for the Terran, and when you are ahead, or you believe you're ahead, poke, prod, have a look around, send drops in, try and get as much as you can from that lead, because otherwise you're allowing your opponent time to catch up, which is precisely what we're seeing here. This army is 200 of 200, you can't get any more supply, what are you waiting for? Go and try and get a good attack angle, drop everywhere if you're not ready for a head-on engagement. The Viking count is still too low, also quite a few of those Vikings are really, really badly hurt. This base is now going to get picked off, but the Protoss army coming in. Now again, this problem is the Protoss army is going to come in from the side, and look at how much better the attack angle for the Protoss is right now. All these units, half of them aren't even engaging, half of them aren't in the fight, you're just allowing the Protoss to pick off units in a fight by fight. Good force fields. Now again, the force fields, I would have run back there. Don't try and split your army up. The Vikings are doing a good job of trying to pick up those Colossus, which is going okay, but again, this pro this war, this battle was just a bit too even. It was not really where I'd like it to be. It would be always better to pull back and save your forces and try and get a better angle. Angle of attack is so absolutely critical to the game, and this is really where we're seeing some problems. Yes, there's quite a few stalks out. All these medevacs are going to get, or a lot of the medevacs could get taken out here, especially with good blinks forward. So always be thinking when is a good time to retreat there's no shame in running away if you think that you're going to get beat as you can see here obviously the protest is now in a bit of trouble it does have a lot of bank now obviously the terran player with huge amounts of gas banked up as well you got to think how can i spend that more effectively what can i do to really combat that good stim forward trying to pick off those units you know there's only a few there but again don't overcommit. look how far away those units are from the medevacs what if there was two classes just popped out and another warp in of units were there that would cause problems that could potentially lose all of this force very very quickly but good work here picking off everything and anything you can see a lot of probes just chilling up at the top there and well the protoss player is really on the ropes at the moment and yet again the terran is in a huge advantage and it's just a case of, am I going to go and really capitalise on that? So if we speed up the game momentarily here, just to try and see what's going on, because I'm, I am aware that this is getting quite long. Obviously, go and push forward. You've got a huge advantage, nearly 100 supply advantage right now, yet the Terran isn't really capitalising on it. And that is due to, I'd imagine, lack of scans is the biggest thing. You don't realise you've got a big advantage, but if you've come off and won a big death, will be death fight, you're going to be good game. Plus, three ship weapons, that's good as well. The only problem here is there's no Vikings. So, again, this could come back to you. Good attack angle here. Half the units coming from behind, half the other side. This is going to be an absolute wide wash of a fight. The Terran player hugely ahead right now. Um, again, there's the GG well played, and yeah, it was a good game. Now, really points to consider is the, I'd say, don't be afraid to retreat. If your money's getting high, build bases and expand. And the purpose of drops is to try and spread out the army. So don't drop their third base when the whole army's there, for example. Try and think about dropping in separate places. Also, don't be too worried about being too defensive. Poke and prod. And again, you'll be more comfortable poking and prodding forward once you're more comfortable with the fact of retreating when you don't know you've got it. And really, you should only engage if you've got a good angle, a good angle of attack, and you're really confident you're going to win the fight. So, yeah, that was a subscriber game. I hope you all liked it. If you did, subscribe, leave a comment, like the video. And if you've got a game you want me to cast or take a look at, then send it through to sc2england at hotmail.co.uk. Cool. Bye for now.